I am, to all intents and purposes, invisible. They call us invigilators, which makes us sound a lot more important than we actually are. Basically, I'm one of those people that stands in the corner, unnoticed, dressed head to toe in black. And I make sure people don't start licking the paintings or some shit. The only time where I'm required to speak is when I'm near the line. I tell people to stay behind it. And let me tell you, people do not like that. People, in general, are fucking weird. And we get some of the absolute worst in here. We get a lot of mums and babies, of the yummy mummy variety. I don't mind them. Sometimes they come in groups, but often they'll just be a mum on her own. Need to stimulate the baby's objective permanence with some Francis Bacon, I guess. <laughs> One of them was looking at a sculpture and turned to her friend. Does that look like a boob to you? Yeah, absolutely. I'll be honest, since breastfeeding, everything just looks like a boob. I couldn't concentrate in Wagamama's. The walls were very nipply. The boob sculpture that they were looking at is actually a bird's eye impression of a Japanese prisoner of war camp in Arizona. They didn't read the sign. I told you, people are weird. Oh yeah, the line. A couple of weeks ago, I told this old lady to stay behind the line and she just exploded. Was all, I own hundreds of paintings and I let people touch them all the time. And goes on and on and I just felt like saying, well that's fucking brilliant, isn't it? Why don't you just not come here? Why don't you just stay at home and you can rub yourself off to your priceless paintings till your heart's content? But I didn't, because I can't. So I hung my head and said, I appreciate your concern. I shall feed this back to my manager. And that was it. I burst into tears after that, actually. I couldn't stop it. I also couldn't move, couldn't get a tissue. Fantastic. Preet, my manager, she was actually really nice about it and gave me a big pep talk about how they're all cunts and let me go and blow my nose and sort myself out. And when I got back, she had a little smile in the corner of her mouth and said, I've got you a prezi. And she slipped something into my hand. It was a dib dab. The sherbet thing with the stick. 25 years old and I cried at work so I got a sweetie. Poor little me. Poor baby. The babies always stare at me. I think it's because I'm tall. I'd love one. We looked into it a couple of years ago, like properly. We were deadly serious. Let's do it. The future isn't promised kind of thing, but it's basically impossible. Some fucking 13 year old can get knocked up in the middle of the toilets of their school disco, but God forbid two mature adult committed lesbians want one. Oh, no, 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 no. Before you do anything, the council has to give you a full background check. The fucking council. So yeah, they sent us a form. Hello, yes, just checking that you're not a disgusting, screwy in the head, hairy butch, pervy short head, thick necked, big fat, lezzers. Thank you so much and have a lovely day. She had been on antidepressants last year, so our form was rejected straight off the bat. She was also a disgusting screw in the head butch lezer. That's a joke. She was bi anyway. 
were not together anymore, not because she was depressed or bi, is what it is. Four hours, 33 minutes left now. There's a man wearing a red tartan beret with a huge ginger handlebar moustache. He keeps going, ooh, to himself for every painting. He's amazing. I have zero interest in art. I have zero interest in anything at the moment. I think if you peeled off my skin, there wouldn't be anything underneath. And I feel like all the things that I was supposed to get right, I've got so, so wrong. And I don't know how to fix it. All I know now is to stand here, letting life pass me by. I think if someone cut me a dinner, that would make things a bit better. A baby boy is being held up on his mother's shoulders. He's staring right at me. I stare back. Showdown. I stick my tongue out at him. He laughs. Suddenly, a massive sort of screamy, cackling laugh which echoes round the silent gallery. People jump up like the fire alarm's gone off and look around, shocked. I laugh too. Sorry, Preet. And I put my hands in my pockets. Huh. The dib-dab's still there. Fantastic. Behind the line. Alex was played by Lakani Cherwa. Behind the Line was written by Elizabeth Hollingshead. The dramaturgs were Ant Stones and Tom Powell. The sound engineer was Louis Blatherwick. Sound designer and composer was John Nichols. And the director was Polly Thomas. Behind the Line was a naked production for Pentabus. <laughs>